Ideally, what should an artist look for in a producer that they want to work with? What qualities or criteria should they be aware of? Um, well, that's an interesting question uh, because there's so many different ways that producers work. I think for myself, I'll have to flip it back to, you know, as a producer, um, what I think, especially young up-and-coming artists, uh, I think that what they should look for is somebody who they feel really comfortable with, that somebody who's um, not going to take away um, from what they what they are as as a, as a band or as a solo artist, but are, but somebody who's going to add to that, so that they can feel like the producer. So the producer, I think, should uh, always be trying to feel what the artist is trying to achieve, what they're really going for, you know, and uh, and not to get in the way of that. But if it gets to a point where maybe they're not getting it, to be able to actually you know, flip it around to find, to help them find out what's working and what isn't working. And I think that for me, there's really no specific method. And I think for a, a band coming up, especially a young band, if you have a producer who can uh, work like that, who, who can basically shift gears and just try and uh, find that moment when the band and, and his vision come together and everybody in the room is starting to really feel it and then it starts to grow and grow and then all of a sudden you have this you know great you know match together from producer and artist that's what I think that you know you want to look for and you want to feel that okay you know I, I ask it because I think today there seems to be such an emphasis on production where you know the the whole idea of artists today is that you know they want the production of something to be so good in the early stages or even in so-called demos there aren't demos anymore do you think that that kind of thing has caused like pressure on artists to think like producers and to act like producers in the stuff that they're doing themselves i think the pressure is on the producer because i think the artists don't necessarily know how to do what the producer might know how to do and so I think, but usually I think if it's a band, you know, I think there's usually one person who's going to have a vision. Mm -hmm. And if they really, you know, get to feel that vision in motion, I think they're going to loosen up and they're going to be happy and, and, and move forward. But if they don't really understand how to do that, and if the producer doesn't necessarily understand what the band is trying to do, I think there could be a lot of times where there just is a mismatch, perhaps. And, and it might make it more difficult to be able to get you know, uh, no matter what the technology is, no matter what kind of equipment they have, to be, to be able to get to the point where something really like blossoms and and uh, has the potential to last forever, hmm. which I think is a big part of it all. Is like if you can make something that lasts forever. I know in this day and age, it's pretty hard to do, but yeah. but at the same time, I still have have believed that when you make that marriage and something is that great, you're going to be hearing those songs for a long time. You've worked with a lot of incredible acts. You've worked with, you know, XTC, you've worked with Wallflowers, a lot of great artists. I'm curious, after, after the amount of time that you've put in, uh, in this profession, what are the things that excite you about working with an artist? What is it, be, you know, even I'd say beyond the music, uh, that gets you excited to say, yes, I do want to work with this, or no, this isn't for me? Uh, hmm. I, I, you know, for me, it's resonating with the songs and a voice. Okay, I so. think the voice has a lot to do with it. And I also think that um, I've been kind of fortunate to have gotten the, the, usually the third album. And so by that time, I've had a chance to then like listen to the, you know, the um, steps that the artist took to get to that point where they're going to make that record that really could be the one to, to really you know, blast them into you know, the, the stratosphere. And for me, uh, I you know just basically f um, look at what th where they're going and where they want to go. But at the same time, a lot of times they don't really know where they want to go. And so I try and provide or figure out because it's not up to me to provide. It's me up to me to try and figure out like okay, how am I going to take this artist and take him to that next place where they go? Oh, that's what I was trying to do. That's what I was trying to get at. That's where we're missing something. This is where we're getting something, you know. And it has to do with everybody in the band because, like, you might have a drummer that played a certain way all the time on on shows or on records, and then I might have changed something around, like put different things in his kit or 
or take him for an hour or two away from everybody else so that he doesn't feel self-conscious and then work with them. You know, work with everybody until you build that house that all of a sudden, you know, feels right to everybody else. And that's kind of like my, my philosophy on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, today, you know, the industry has changed so much. You have so many different options and roads and I think culturally and musically we've all gone down, you know, so many different paths. What advice would you have for artists coming up today in terms of those that want a career in music? What would you say would be the best steps for them to start taking? Uh, practicing a lot, a okay. lot, uh, playing a lot of shows, getting in the car and, you know, uh, mapping out like uh, a destination. You know, like for instance, the one thing I love about California and bands is like the straight shot you know, up and down the coast. And I think that any band that, that doesn't take advantage of that, it, you know, the fact that they don't have to fly somewhere to be able to play in different venues is absolutely crazy, you know, because literally you just hop on the 101 and you can go all the way from San Diego to Seattle and turn around and go back. And I think in this day and age, there's so many bands that, you know, there's so many bands that in order to make yourself stick out from the others, it's a real challenge. And I think what, what really sticks out at the end of the day is the music. And, you know, and if the music and the front person and the band, you know, can make things happen and they, they don't bitch about it and they don't moan about this isn't happening, this isn't happening, and they actually can get out there and, you know, just be tough enough that when you start getting people to come in, you know, and go to the shows and you realize that, that that you're in a bigger venue all of a sudden than you were before, then they'll just realize it, you know, they'll realize it themselves and they'll really just, you know, that's when they'll have that moment to just keep on, you know, feeling like they, they're the next band that's going to really break out. Okay. Paul, thank you so much for coming and doing this. I really appreciate it very oh, much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Good to see you again. Great to see you as well.